The United States and Canadian governments failed to warn North Americans that they were being saturated in an airborne radiation from Fukushima, Japan during March of 2011. But guess what? It's still happening and it's still here. Okay, this was written on February 9th, 2014 and was on Turner Radio, uh, Turner Radio uh, Network News. It appears the United States and Canadian governments forgot to tell any of us that we were being literally saturated with radiation in the air from the radiation meltdowns and explosions in Fukushima, Japan, after an earthquake and tsunami struck there in March of 2011. It seems they also forgot to tell us, stay inside while it is happening, so we wouldn't breathe the radiation, which is especially sad for the four poor folks in Hawaii, who were to never told radiation levels there were highest in of any place in the entire world, or that there was plutonium in the air. Oh, and by the way, for the last three years, it seems they also forgot to tell us we needed to wash down all of our property to make sure we get rid of the radiation or we'd be continuously exposed to it in our own homes, our own backyards, and our own cars. Thanks to the French government, now you know. Better late than never. We are, however, glad to report that the United States government, knowing this was happening, did take action. The United States Environmental Protection Agency changed the way they reported radiation levels that they found to conceal the fact that radiation in Hawaii went up 53 times or 53 fold. There, feel better now? What do you mean, no? Well, hang on. The news gets worse. And that radiation that fell from the sky, it's still there. It's on your roof. It's in your yard. And it's in your car. According to a detailed 188-page report issued by the IRS N. Institute for Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety, the French national public expert in nuclear and radio radiological risks, North America was literally saturated with dangerous levels of airborne radiation in the weeks after three nuclear reactors melted down and exploded in Fukushima, Japan around March 15, 2011. The chart below issued <coughs> by the French government tells the story in graphic detail. Behold the areas that were bathed in radiation and high levels were. And you can look at that chart. As shown at left, more than 90% of the entire United States and more than 75% of Canada were doused in potent radioactive fallout. The worst, the fallout have accumulated directly over the Hawaiian Islands. Now think back a moment. Was there even one time back in March of 2011 that you heard or were told by any official that the levels of radiation in the air were dangerous and that you should stay indoors with the windows closed? Was there even one time that you were told that this radiation plume, which had crossed the Pacific Ocean, contained plutonium? Was there even one time that you were told that inhaling even one millionth of a gram of plutonium 
causes lung cancer? Preposterous, you say. If this were true, the mass media would have told would have been all over it. Really? Sorry to, to have to clue you in, but the fa uh, but the fact you didn't hear it at the time gives lie to that belief. It got on your roof, your deck, your patio, your grass, inside the house too. Back in March of 2011, when you came in from work or school totally ignorant of the radiation surrounding you, guess what? You brought into your house with you. Yes, that's right, radiation. It got on your floors and carpets from your shoes. It was on the clothes you were wearing outside. Did you sit on the sofa while wearing the same clothes you did on the outside? Of course you did. Guess what? Yes, it's probably there too. The little gift that keeps on giving every time. You lay down to relax on the couch. Oh gee, lucky you. Now, I don't mean to criticize but as I read this and I you know this is and I don't mean to be a, a fear monger but we need to get people's attention. We need to, to express ourselves. We need to give this testimony to everybody we can. We need to spread the word that we need to be pre, uh, take every precaution. Now I'm going to go back to reading. How about your bed? Well, it probably ended up on the sheets and, and got washed off when you did the family laundry. But are you really sure there isn't some lurking in the mattress or worse? In your pillow, where you lay your head every night? Let's talk about the outside for a moment. Did you fall did the fallout end up in your on your roof, your porch, your deck, your uh, patio, furniture? Maybe even in your barbecue? They're all outside. And they got hit too. Is it still there, silently emitting its deadly radiation? Old nonsense. It's been there years, you say. Okay. We'll give you that, of course. That doesn't matter a whole lot. A whole hill of beans because half life of cesium is 130, uh, cesium 137 is 28 years. And the half-life of plutonium is 28,000 years. So again, we ask, is it still there? How can any of us know when nobody is testing? Not the local town government, not the, the country, the county, nor the state, and certainly not the feds. It's often amazing to watch some of these government types on TV telling people we have no evidence that there's any danger. Of course they don't. They aren't testing. They're not testing for it. How the hell can they have evidence if they're not testing? Now let's talk about your children. The, uh, they love playing outside in the spring and summer, don't they? The Fukushima meltdown and explosions happened from March 11th to March 15th in 2011, springtime. According to the French government chart, above the radiation was here in North America by March 21st, oh, oh springtime. The kids go outside and play in the spring, don't they? Did anyone from the government even bother to tell you the kids might be breathing this stuff in and keep them inside? As they played with their little friends in, in the local park or the swings 
on the swings and in the monkey bars, this the sliding pond rolled ar rolled around the the grass. Did anyone tell you they were being coated with radiation? You just love to open your windows and get it, the air uh, out and and uh, with clean fresh air in the springtime, don't you? Sorry to tell you, there was little something extra in that air during March of 2011, and you let it into your house. Our government knew all th all of this, and they kept it secret from us. They didn't even give us a chance to protect ourselves or our children. Where was the the mass media? By now, a lot of your if you are skeptical because you think if any of this was possibly true, the media would have been all over it. They were, and they weren't. There was major coverage of the earthquake in Japan and the tsunami came afterwards. We got wall to wall coverage of the damage, destruction death taking place in Japan. Our hearts broke as we were shown images of people floating out in the, off the roofs and standing on the roofs of their homes waiting for help. We got chills when we saw the piles of dead bodies laying everywhere. It was truly horrific. When we saw this, Americans did what Americans always do. We sent help. We donated to the Red Cross or a multitude of other charity groups. We were gladdened to see that our government was sending plane loads and boatloads of food, water, and emergency media, medical supplies. That our Navy was helping with the USS Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier battle group. Days after the tsunami, as the reactor cores in Fukushima melted down and began exploding one after another and one after another, we got wall-to-wall -wall coverage of that too. And it was then that the mass media massively abdicated its responsibility. Sure, the media asked, hey, where is all that radiation from the Fukushima plant going? But when the pl pl platitudes came, wherein so-called experts repeatedly stated that there was no danger to, the, to America, that the mass media completely fell on its face. Quite simply, they utterly failed to do their job and failed in the most miserable way. Here's why. You say the mass media no longer performs its two primary functions. These functions are A holding a mirror up to society by reporting the facts without passion or prejudice and b holding the government accountable for what it does or fails to do in the public name. Instead of being on government's back, the mass media is too busy kissing the government's arse. The so-called reports reporters were always uh, we're, we're, the reporters nowadays are almost starstruck by government officials. The media has no clue anymore that the high-ranking officials they report on are more public servants who feed at the public trough. Let's face it, government produces nothing. It creates nothing. It feeds off the work of others for its very existence. Who in their right mind would be a starstruck would be starstruck by that? Really, though, that's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is that you you've been told the government and the media thought you would have panicked. You see, the folks in government have long ago forgotten they exist to serve. They and the folks in the mass media nowadays actually 
suffer from two definitions. Number one, they are smarter than you and you need to be protected from the truth because it may upset you. Forgive us if we seem blunt, but news people whose major qualifications are looking good and being able to read something smoothly from the uh, teleprompter have no claim to being smarter than, well, pretty much anyone. But there's the whole idea of being on TV in front of some large audience that seems to get the better of these folks. And a lot of them, not all, have gotten so impressed with themselves they actually believe that they know better for us than we know for ourselves. They dare to decide for us what we should do and what we should know. This is intolerable. It isn't hard to think that Edward R. Merle is spinning in his grave at what passes for reporters and journalists these days. Demand the mass media go and sin no more. Fortunately, the mass media has a chance to redeem itself right now, today. They can head on over to the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and start demanding answers, for instance. Why did the EPA change the unit of measure of uranium found in Hawaii from the one used for decades, which showed radiation levels of four, of four in Hawaii to a new unit which seemed to show the radiation dropped to 0.000215. Here's the proof. Look at the sharp image below and pay close attention to the bottom two lines of the chart. It shows uranium-238 in 2010 for allocaries per cubic meter. Uranium-238 in 2011 0.000215 picuries per cubic meter. In the far right column, you'll see that the 2010 EPA measured uranium levels in units called allocuries. But after Fukushima, they changed the measurement to picocuries. Please take, take a look again and you'll see the change of a single letter in the far right column from CIM to in 2010 to PCIM in 2011. This was deliberate, a, an act of deception by the EPA, because for the average person, they would see the measured level that seemed to drop from 4 into the year 2010 to 0 .000215 in the year 2011. The average person would look and say to themselves, great, the level dropped. Truth is, the level increased 53 times. The reason the con uh, conversion factor is 1. Pio uh, Curry, one million allocuries, by changing from allocuries to picocuries, EPA was able to, to display what appeared to be a much smaller number. But simply, if the EPA kept the measurement in allocuries, one would see that the level went from 4 to 215. Went from 4 and increased up to 215. A 53-fold increase. So not only the EPA not telling the public about the dangers of Fukushima radiation, they are actually trying to conceal the danger by changing the unit of measurement. They, are, they use it to report. This is deliberate fraud, a deliberate conspiracy on the part of the EPA to hide from the public 
the fact that after Fukushima radiation in Hawaii increased 53 times the previous year's level clearly, these people in the EPA have forgotten who pays their salaries, us. What makes this all the more serious? The EPA risk range concentrations began at 510 ACIM autocurries per cubic meter. So within days of the Fukushima disaster, radiation levels in Hawaii had jumped 53 times. If the radiation went up that much in a matter of days, what are the radiation levels now? Well, no one knows. The EPA stopped testing after that and got after they got that huge reading. Here is your chance, mass media, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, Fox, Associated Press, UPI, and all the rest. Do your job. Go get them. With the EPA caving in to pressure from the nuclear industry, or worse, were they caving in to the political people who didn't want the public to know how serious the, da the danger was? Call your local TV station. Call your local newspaper. Call the major news uh, networks and demand they start covering this. Deludes them with calls. News just keeps getting worse. According to documentary, documentary aired on February 1, 2014 by NHK, a leading media outlet in Tokyo, more than two and a half years after the meltdowns, investigators have finally captured evidence of leaks from reactors. Reactor 1, containment uh, vessels. Wow, two and a half years and only now have they found some leaks. And in only one of the three reactors, it gets worse. In that same time, NIHK document uh, Shemsuk Anchida, a nuclear fuel expert, is quoted as saying, given the amount of release to date, tritium will be released for 20 more years, at least. Cesium will continue longer, another 40 or 50 years. The NHK documentary poignantly states, crisis managers are still in the dark about the situation in reactors two and three. Let's see if we have this straight. They've been working at this disaster site for almost three years, and they still don't know what's going on. What's going on inside two of the three reactors? They blew up. That blew up. Back to the documentary. Viewers are told radioactive cesium and water it's inside the port or the beach of the Pacific Ocean at times has been exceeded has even exceeded the government's limit. This means that radioactive water is still draining into the sea. The owner of the plant, Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, said it is, it's containing the leaks by cementing trenches and taking other measures. But even today, radioactive cesium, cesium is deleted is detected in groundwater. This proves that radioactive water is leaking from the places missed by TEPCO and draining into the sea. An official from TEPCO said it's quite difficult to stop the tainted water. Immediately, we'll have to deal with that with it in the long term. In the long term, it's been almost three years how much longer does he consider long term? How many of us will die before then? The documentary also admits TEPCO initially built an underground dam along the shoreline, but it did not solve the problem. 
Five months after the work began, radiation levels inside the port on the Pacific Ocean show no signs of receding. And in some places, workers found cesium levels that are higher than the, the government's limit. What you can do now for yourselves and your family. Get vocal. Get active. Make phone calls. Write letters. Talk to your friends and your neighbors. Go to your local town council meetings and raise the issue. Explain that it is imperative that everyone pull together to protect our communities. The first step is being protected. The first step in being protected is knowledge. And to get your knowledge, we must have information. Ask your town council to allocate funds to buy and deploy community radiation detectors. Have them plug in the town website on the internet so everyone in town can log in and see the uh, live readings. Then ask the town to allocate money to buy some Geiger counters and ask the town p to provide free radi uh, radiation uh, checks inside homes for every citizen who feels the need. Tell them to recruit and train volunteers if they have to. This is too important to let budget uh, crap get in the way. Repeat the same steps at the county level. Repeat the same steps at the state level. Call your local assemblyman, your local senator. Write to them. Ask them to get involved. If after doing these things you see nothing happen, no media coverage, no efforts by the local, county, and state government, then you know all you need to know about whether or not the government cares one whit about you. And more than that, you'll know the mass media is nothing more than a carefully staged effort at modern day bread and circuses. Don't be surprised to find out that you're on your own. And that's it. But just click down to go to this and spread this out. This is this is just one of the many things that's happening. And uh, there's things that are going to be uh, going to be worse, a lot worse. Now, I think that I have an idea of what's going to be happening in 2014. And I will be making videos explaining that. But it's going to be devastating. And uh, it's going to be a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And we need to seek the Lord. Uh, keep your mind stayed upon Him. Trust Him to protect us, because He will. And uh, so no matter what you see throughout the world, there might be thousands of, of uh, people dying all over. But if you keep your mind stayed upon the Lord, He's going to protect you. Now that's for sure. And that's according to His Word. And I, I guarantee that for you. This Trust him, follow your intuition, not your mind, but your intuition, your spirit, and, and uh, do whatever the Lord tells you to do. God bless all of you. Thank you so much.